And now we move on to the West. And for all of you who are listening to us on YouTube, I do apologize for whatever background music you may be hearing. There is a <laughs> handicapped man with a gigantic speaker waiting out in front of my house for the city bus who has <laughs> been blasting Anthony Hamilton for the last 30 minutes. My oh, man. So... <laughs> I, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear anything. So okay. Good. All right, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, and, and what's funny is uh, my dog is sick. And I didn't hear any of his, like, he's just been barking. I took him out a couple times, like, before, but I don't fucking know. He keeps eating grass every time I take him outside. I'm just like, all right. Like, well, he's trying to make himself sick. He's trying to throw <laughs> up. I don't know. It is what it is. But uh, let's keep it pushing. This is second side, right? Second side, baby. We're talking about the Western Conference. Um, Yeah, let's get right to it. Terry, you determined the order for the East. Yes, sir. These are my picks for the West. Let's start at the bottom with none other than the Portland Trail Braces. Oh, yeah. This is the year that we see dominating. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, I think Portland's biggest problem is they don't have a best player on the team. Like, Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant, DeAndre Ayton, these are all like second, third bananas. <laughs> But yeah. nobody's good enough to, like, carry this team anywhere. The hope is that Scoot Henderson gets better and that he, beca he becomes a guy who, like, plays because he's good and not just mm -hmm. because he's the third overall pick. Um, I like them picking up Denny Avdia. I think he's going to give some structure around him. I like Donovan Klingon, who they drafted in the first round. They have some good role players and Matisse Teibel and Tumani Kamara. Time Lord, Jeremy Grant, has some decent defenders. But this team can't score. Nope. This team gives the ball to all of its worst players. The majority of the guys with the ball in their hands are going to be Scoot and Shaden Sharp, who's been incredibly inefficient since he came into the league. Good catch-and-shoot player, but likes to take most of his threes off the dribble, despite hitting less than 28% of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they have no reason to be good. Like, I think that's the no. biggest thing is like, they're probably going to trade some of these rotation players. They should. They've been tanking for a minute. They're trying to get the number one draft pick. Everyone else in the East is going to be way better than them. Like, so West, why yeah. even try? Or yeah, the West, uh, the Blazers, they're my worst pick for the, for the West. Clock's ticking on Matisse Tybal. Can we get him back on a contender, please? My God. Like the defense that he plays night in and night out. What you know, me watching all these games in Portland while my wife's asleep because I can watch all the West Coast games. Trade him to somebody who can win. Like he, he so many like the anticipatory, like the anticipatory. Is that goddamn? I can't even like say yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, the anticipatory, did. like cutting the passing lane off, steals and shit. He is so good at that, and I just wish he would stop wasting it in Portland. Like, it, it's insane. And if he could – please just make an open three, dog. If you can make an open three, you're one of the best players in the league. Not, like, actually, but valued. Value-wise, like, somebody could definitely use you. He needs to go. Why is Jeremy Grant on his team? Was it a money thing? Didn't he get paid the most or no? Yeah, it's another, like, title type guy. Like, he could help 12 contenders. or yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why is he languishing? He's not going to be there for long. I need, Portland's I need going to have a fire sale. I do think they'll it keep should dominating. Even, give yeah, him a chance probably. to dominate this year. <laughs> I mean, I, if you put people around him, he he proved himself to be, like, a good piece to a championship roster. But, like, he's not, like, yeah. the number one. He was one great team. on the Nuggets. The Nuggets would love to have Jeremy Grant back right now. Yeah. Yeah, not for sure. I thought you were talking about DeAndre Ayton, but my bad. Oh, no, sorry. I'm done <laughs> talking about him. He sucks. I've hated DeAndre Ayton since before he was drafted. That is not changing now that he's moved to Portland where he can't back out of his own driveway to go. There to you go, him. baby. Over under 20 and a half. Where are you going, under? Is there a negative? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they suck. I'm taking the under on that one. Yeah, me too. Anything else that you'd say about the Trailblazers, Terry? Uh, a lot of cooks. No chefs. Yeah. 
I don't like my I food prepared. Totally by agree that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jason Hale. All right, Hell second yeah. up, I have the Utah Jazz as the second worst team in the West. Utah. Okay. Okay. Last two seasons, you know, they embraced the tank. They were twenty six and twenty six at the fifty two game mark. Both of the last two years before yep. going up five and twenty five the rest of the way, <laughs> or because uh, they twenty. They're... Idiots! They should have tanked in the beginning. They when they looked at yeah. their roster, were they like, "Oh yeah, it's a horrible one"? No, oh, I think all, both of us. We talked about it last year. We looked at the roster. They're like, "I don't know, man. It's a decent team." You know, I think they're trying to tank, but they're not a good. They're not doing a good job of doing it. This team is too good to tank. They're they're gonna do a better job this year because yeah. most of their roster are young players, yeah. so they're gonna be leaning on guys like Cody Williams, Isaiah Collier. Bryce Sensabaugh, Kyle Filipkowski, Keontae yep. George. Yep. This is like the majority of their roster. So it's all first and second year players, everyone that I've mentioned in that list. And then on top of that, you got Walker Kessler, who's a third year player. You got mm-hmm. John Collins, who's a shell of himself. He's not going to help you win anything. He doesn't have a position. <laughs> um, He's not a power forward. You... <laughs> no. <laughs> he doesn't he... have a position. No, dude, he sucks now. <laughs> he, I don't know what happened to him, but they let hit him with the fucking Space Jam basketball. And kids saw John his Collins finger and, off. He can't <laughs> shoot anymore. He was Kids shooting in the basketball like court. Like, You're not John Collins. Yeah, he was shooting 40% from three before he chopped like the quarter part of his tip fingertip off. Of course, you're going to shoot bad. You can't even, imagine shooting like this. What? You got there's no feeling in it, like it's gone. I get it. He can still jump. He can still dunk. He can still block shots. But yeah, unfortunately, he can't guard <laughs> anymore. I don't know where yeah. this like defensive four who led us to the Eastern Conference spot. Either it's way, confidence. This, it's te- confidence, this bro. team, yeah, this team is full of scrubs. <laughs> like they're gonna fucking suck. Yeah. I have the and of course it's the Cooper flag joint. You know how dealer Danny is. Like he knows if it's not contending, he's gonna get all the assets he can. Why though? Oh, and by the way, um, they owe their first round pick this year to the Thunder if it doesn't land in the top five. So, oh yeah, they're so gonna, they're be gonna tank it up. Yeah, yeah they're gonna tank they're it gonna up. What's up with but like, Lori Markinen is actually really good at basketball though. So I don't really understand why he's on the team. If you're gonna go like full tank, tank, because how old is he actually? How old is Markinen? Twenty six. Twenty five. Twenty six. Yeah, he's twenty seven. Is he the cornerstone dude, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, can no. you actually win a fucking championship with Cooper the- Flag, Lori Markinen, and what, Keontae George? And like, who's the no. third? No, no, no. You know what He'll I'm saying? The, so, he'd, he'd have to be the third banana, not the second one. But they're a long ways from contending, and they have plenty of time to figure it out. I just out. feel like they're he's like, gonna... wait. I feel like he's waiting for like this Moby Dick, Laurie Markin and like great trade. And I don't think it's going to happen. Like people aren't just going to sell the house just to get. A I third mean, the piece. Warriors were going to give him two first for him and they said no. So but their like, first always know. sucked. That's probably why he was like, yeah. what, what the fuck do I want a, the 26th pick in the draft for? I'm good on that. Dealer Danny. He knows what he's doing. I'll give that to him. The we'll man see. is a beast of collecting assets. Yep. I imagine he'll collect a couple more this season as they race to the bottom to keep their pick. Yeah. Number 13 in the West. 26 and a half. Huh? 26 and a half, Utah. Over, under. Under. Mm -hmm. Uh, Under. Yeah, probably. I might lock that in. Low key. All right, next up, number 13 in the West. I have the Los Angeles Clippers. Oh. Are they on their picks? No. <laughs> they don't know <laughs> their picks until 2031. Oh, they're com- God. What? Yeah. yeah, they're completely capped out, picked out, trade every asset that they have so they could assemble this roster around James Harden. Oh, um, God. They're severely lacking in secondary playmaking and shooting. Um, but I'm sure adding Derek Jones Jr. and Chris Dunn will really help that. <laughs> uh, they reunited shitty French fucks, uh, Nick Batum and Mo Bamba. 
So I'm sure they'll have some chemistry <laughs> Mo there. Mamba is not French. He isn't. No. He, what are you from Cameroon or some shit? <laughs> he's from I know, Brooklyn. I know he speaks French. <laughs> he's from Brooklyn, bro. That's why Sheck was saying the song about him. Because they went to the same school. Oh, word. I thought he was <laughs> yeah. just heavy in the fucking like mixtape uh, YouTube annals. <laughs> oh, my God. No, man. That's that's funny, bro. That's almost well, as funny as when you called Tory Lanez Tory Lanez. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> that's up there. <laughs> that's up there. Or when I said that fucking um, uh, Quavo died. <laughs> oh, God. No. Oh, yeah. That did, I think you said offset. Quavo. I you said like, offset. No. Was you said offset. Then you're like, no, 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 my bad, my bad. Quavo, Quavo. And I was like, no, it was takeoff. <laughs> anyway, that's up there. I meant that's to say they reunited European fucks, Daniel Tice and uh, Nick oh, Batum. There you go. <laughs> Mo Bamba. <laughs> Mo Bamba's yeah. catching straight. Mo Bamba's probably at his house, like, yo, what? I'm from Brooklyn, dog. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Mo. I'm also sorry you have to be part of this team because James Harden is probably going to lead the league in uses rate, except he's no longer that guy that he was in Houston. Um, they have no control over their next five drafts. They have no ability to upgrade the roster. They have no incentive to tank. They have no impactful players on the team. If anything... I think that they'll probably trade some of these guys and try to get some picks back for the couple of years. Yeah, I can see them I'm... trading hard. I can see them trading man. I can see them trading Norman Powell. Because guess what? You don't have a single draft pick until 2031. And Kawhi is going to be out for – it says indefinitely, which you don't like to see that. And, and that's where things start <laughs> and end with him. He played 68 yeah. games last year. Mm -hmm. He was a big reason they were in the top four. It's the first NBA. time he's played 60 games since 2017. Mm -hmm. He got, couldn't play in the Olympics, even though he took up a spot. Took a Out for bag. the start of the season. This is another, it's done. Kawhi Leonard's knee is cooked. It's time we all understand it. It's time we all give in. He's never going to be that guy that he was in Toronto again. He can't carry a fucking team in the regular season. And um, this Clippers team, who else is going to carry him? James Harden? I don't so see it's, it happening. It's going to be a lot of James Harden, and I'm willing to bet. I don't know what his points per game spread might be for the season, but whatever it is, I'm going over. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's nobody else on the squad. So he may have more going. turnovers than Trey Young this season. So it's, it's Harden, Kevin Porter Jr., who had the – Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And I think he, he got uh, proven innocent. I think it was like all a hoax or whatever by the girl or something like that. Or I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> no. What? He hit her? Oh, he hit her or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, I mean, he, he's good at basketball. So, like, when he gets in the game, he's he's probably going to play a lot. Then you got Bones Highland and Norman Powell and I don't know, bro. This is going to be tough. But, you know, you're, I don't think your boy wants to lose any games. Owner. Uh, Balmer. I don't oh, think Steve in the Ballmer. brand new arena that he just christened Brent. by giving Kawhi Leonard a four year, $200 million deal. Hey, he didn't want to get Paul used George to it, like buddy. 40 You're not going to be doing any winning. You got no draft picks until 2020 31. This team yeah. sucks. Your best player yeah. can't stay on the court. I don't know what you're hoping to do in this next arena, but I hope you have fan friendly, uh, like food prices. Can you trade Kawhi or is he damaged goods? Who the fuck would take Kawhi on like fifty million dollars a year? Hey, somebody took a uh, worse. That might be the worst deal in the NBA. Tobias Harris, his deal was Dude. pretty shit. There's a lot of yeah, shit. Yeah, he's deals. A, he's a, he's on a new one with the Pistons. He's making like eighteen a year or something. Well, now, but before, yeah, when he was, yeah. yes, his contract. I'm talking about crazy. right now. Like, who would you rather have? Two more years of Jordan Poole or five more years of Kawhi for fifty million each? Neither. Don't I don't want it's it. a bad deal, bro. The Clippers are <laughs> fucked. They're yeah, right they, back to that right back to one. where they used to be in. Yeah, at the that bottom was, of the that West. Was, that was an idiotic fucking trade or uh extension. Damn, bro. That sucks, man, because that, that arena looks 
absolutely amazing and is like going to be the future of arenas i think in the in the yeah. you know in america and probably the world in the upcoming years but oh man they might be watching some shit basketball for the next five years well, they can enjoy the arena when shakira comes to la <laughs> <laughs> keep it rocking over under all right oh 20 what no, Seriously? 35, 35 and a half. Okay, I'll take the under on that. I was like 20-something. I might have to take the over on the Clippers. I can't believe it. Yeah, 35 and a half, 36 wins. Man, you got them, what, 13? 13 in the West. Yo, the West, the 13th seed in the West is going to win 36 games? No. Oh, that's I what I'm taking the under. That. <laughs> yeah, that's that's high. But like, I'm looking at the over unders, and I don't really like. That's it. Just it's a huge leap from that. It went from the the Blazers to the Jazz to 36 wins. That's a lot. Really? So they're the third lowest win title in terms of betting. Yeah, a unless lot of I'm other tripping. season previews I've seen, like they got the Clippers higher, eight, nine, ten. I think I'm nah. the lowest of anyone I've seen on them. Now nah, I see Trailblazers, Jazz, and Clippers. And then I won't say the other ones just for some parody, but yeah, yeah that's kind of wild. Wow. That's a lot of wins, bro. I'm a, just for betting purposes, I'm going under. Lock it in. <laughs> lock, lock in the it under? Fuck in. Yeah, lock yeah, it in. We'd have to. We got to on that one. All right, go ahead. Number 12. In the Western Conference, I have the San Antonio Spurs. They added Chris mm. Paul. They added Harrison Barnes. They drafted Stefan Castle. Adam Paul, you know, it should help push the bad players onto the bench. Yeah. We shouldn't have to watch Tank Master Malachi Branham anymore. Yeah. Keldon Johnson should be in a actual NBA environment where he can yep. do things that he's done in the past. Julian Champagne looked like he could shoot threes. Mamu looked like he but might become a rotation player. I like Tr Trey Jones to give them a point guard that they didn't have. Devin Vassell is a good starter if he can figure out how to fucking shoot, which is his calling card coming out of Florida State. Yep. This team is the best defender in the world and finished 22nd on defense last season. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with the Spurs. Not only is their bench fucking horrible, not only do – very few of their pieces fit together. They would have the worst defense in the league if Wembenyana was not on this team. And maybe the worst defense in history. And I don't see how that's going to get much better this season. Everyone's expecting them to take a big leak up, leak up, leap up this season. I think they'd rather fuck around for another year and get another lottery pick and see if they got a shot at this Cooper flag shit. I don't think they're ready right now. I know Chris Paul did a number in OKC. I know he led a scrappy ragtag bunch to that the playoffs. Like three and a half years ago. Yeah. The West is much better. The Spurs are not good. I got them uh, 12. Yeah, unfortunately, unless Chris Paul fucking, you know, went to Germany with the whole Kobe knee situation or whatever injuries he has, Trey Jones and Win Binyama are going to be the pick and roll duo. Uh, I'm good on that. Love Trey Jones, love Tyus <laughs> Jones. You know, I'm a big Duke fan, you know, growing up in Durham and all that, but nah. That's one of the dumbest signings I've seen. Look, just be a coach, Chris. It's over, dog. If he, if win, he plays, go ahead. Sorry, I was saying they'll win 10 more games than they did last year just because they're not going to have Jeremy Sohan being their point guard. No, that's facts. But that's about the only upgrade I see is that you're not making a center play point guard anymore. Yeah, but 10 more wins for them would be 32. 32. I don't know if they're... Oof, Seems about right for me. Seems about 32 right. 32 wins. Me. Let's see how good Wimbin Yama is, though. He looked absolutely amazing at the end of last year. But, you know... He's, a lot. he's incredible. Sometimes, though, at the end of the season, certain guys look awesome. You know, not as awesome as he looked. But, like... Yeah. Some of the teams, the positions are already kind of set playoff wise. Everybody's not playing their hardest. They just want to make it to the playoffs early. Let's see. I want to see. First 20 games, if they look amazing, we could both look dumb. But 
I I do I have the Spurs higher personally, but mm, where did you have them? Where did you have them? Just eleven. Nothing crazy. Eleven. Yeah, just fighting because just because he looked, he's a freak, dude. He's an absolute alien unicorn. What a Loch Ness monster. The fucking big Bigfoot. This dude, he's amazing. He's up next, he could be different. You know, he could be the complete difference between stardom and like maybe breaking the ceiling to superstar. Like the heat. I don't even know how to describe this guy, but defensively, if he can get some offense back into his game, beast. Yeah, be and different. they're not going to play him for power forward for the first 25 games of the season either. Yeah, um, Unfortunately, it's just – I think they should just play because the Trailblazers, you can't outlose the Blazers. I don't think you're going to be able to outlose the Jazz. Then there's the Wizards, Pistons, you know, LaMelo injury, Hornets possibly. There's so many bad teams. It'd be tough for them to get a top five pick this year. And I only really know Cooper Flag right now. I'm sure more names will come. But Oh, I was just talking in terms of getting into the lottery. I mean, we just saw the Hawks finish with like the 12th worst record and get the number one pick. No, the no, Pistons that's what I'm saying. The worst record for five years in a row and haven't had a number one pick. So No, that, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, I don't, there's no incentive for them to keep tanking. Just play, see what you can do. You know, try to win. I, you're going to get a pick. I don't. You're not going to get the number one. You probably probably won't get the number one pick. The Hawks is an anomaly, but you probably won't get the number one pick. So just play, man. Yeah. All right. I'm with you. I wanted to put them higher, but I just couldn't do it, man. They they don't shoot threes. Mm-hmm. I. Oh, should I cover the microphone when I say this? Because this is a hot take. Nah, go ahead. I have concerns about Greg Popovich's coaching ability at this stage of his career. <laughs> hey, look. I don't think that's that big of a take. I think that might be true. Are the mics back on? Did they cut them? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Blasphemy aside, uh, yeah. like they're just antiquated. You know what I mean? They don't shoot enough yeah. threes to thrive in the in the modern NBA. They like to play two bigs together who can't shoot. They like to play a bigot point guard. So a bigot, a bigot. I, 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 I'm I'm not sure what they're doing or why they're doing it. But shout out to Greg Popovich, I guess. Hey, look, man, it's not an untrue statement. It is what it is. And how many games did Chris Paul play last year? Forty. Three? It says it says fifty eight at twenty six minutes a game. He started eighteen games, eh, and he gave me nine points and six assists. It's actually way better than I thought, but it honestly seemed like he didn't play a lot of games. What's so weird? Like, and, is nine and six going to change the Spurs' fortunes though? Like, nah, man. But if he honestly though, if he plays fifty eight games, would Wimpy? That actually might not be horrible. He just didn't fit with Golden State, but fuck, man. Every time when somebody plays like 58 games, I swear to God, it feels like they only played like 20. Yeah. Because it's like you can't watch every single game of, you know, every single team, and you, you know, you turn the TV on, you're like, yo, where's uh, Chris Paul at? Still hurt on the bench street clothes? All right, well, he didn't play all season. Then you look at this shit, he played 58 games. You're like, get the fuck out of here. He didn't play 58 games. It's not buying to me. You just put him out there in the street clothes. Oh, he's in. He's out. Yeah. They gave him the Mikel Bridges two minutes to keep your streak alive. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Change it to minutes. Of keeping the sh- right. right. Um, keeping keeping the streak alive here, Terry. It was only two years ago that this team was streaking. They finished second in the Western Conference. But now I have them eleventh this year. Of course, I'm talking about the 13th best point guard in the league, John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. <laughs> so obviously John is not the 13th best in the league. All right. No. Or, uh, I said 13th best player at the time that proved yeah. to be about 25 spots too high. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Two years yeah. ago, the Grizzlies went 21 and six without him. Mm-hmm. They won 56 games. They finished second in the West or Western conference. Yep. Yeah. Since then, Terry, John Morant got suspended, got hurt, played nine games last season. Mm-hmm. They lost Kyle Anderson, 
They lost Dylan Brooks. They lost Anthony Melton. They sent out two firsts to turn Tyus Jones into Marcus Smart. Meanwhile, Stephen Adams and Brandon Clark both had basically career-ending catastrophic injuries. Yeah. The entire center rotation got reduced to gravel. Luke Kennard aged in dog years and became washed overnight. But you know who's coming to save the day? The most overrated player in college basketball. Seven foot five. Naismith Award winner, Zach Eady. He's going to be wow. rookie of the year, right? Oh, wait. He can't move his feet. He can't defend a pick and roll. All he can do is block shots and post up smaller players. Uh, sounds like a bench unit guy to me. Oh, but wait a minute. Who's a starting center that we could put on the court? Because we know Jaron Jackson Jr. can't play center. Nope. He can only play 28 minutes a game. He'll foul <laughs> out if he plays start, just starting center. Yeah. Um, the, they don't have a backup center, Terry. They mm-hmm. have one center on the whole roster, and his name is Zach, Zach Eady. The second rounders that they've taken in the recent years have seemed to lap their first rounders. Yep. Gigi Jackson, Vince Williams. They're way better than Jake LaRavia and Santi Aldam. Yep. The Grizzlies fired um, uh, their entire coaching staff this offseason, except for head coach Taylor Jenkins, meaning they're probably looking at somebody to replace him. That this is a move made by the front office. So mm-hmm. we have disagreements between the front office and the coach. And then let me get to this roster, Terry. Stop me when I mention a playoff rotation caliber player. Jay Huff. Stop. Jalen no, Wells. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cam Spencer. Ooh. Scotty Pippen Jr. John Conchar. Jake LaRavia. Yuki Karamura. Santi Aldama, Brandon Clark, Luke Kennard, Vince Williams Jr., Zach Eady, Gigi Jackson, and Marcus Smart. Did I mention a playoff caliber rotation player in that list of 13 players, Terry? You got some one-way playoff guys, but legit dudes, nah, probably not. Not at this point in their careers. They got a good big three, and that's it. It's more than the teams below them can say, but it's not good enough in the West. Who's the three? The Grizzlies are oh, uh, uh, Bane, Ja, Bain. and JJJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bane. That's yeah. it. That's the whole yeah. team. That, that's the whole team. That's going to be tough, man. It's going to be a tough one, especially if Ja gets hurt again. He's prone to get hurt. I feel like people just kind of forget about that. So I, It's going to be a tough one, man. It's going to be a tough one, but, you know. Are you with me? Did you have the Grizzlies this low? Uh, I mean, I had the Grizzlies at 10. Okay. Last year, I was wilding. Because I had him at six like an idiot, just being dumb. I thought Ja was going to – and look, the return tour was coming. But, unfortunately, <laughs> it only lasted nine games. <laughs> I mean, he came back with a vengeance. Game winner. You know, he was playing well. But um, it is what it is. He's going to have to prove himself to be uh, one of the top players in the league again. Stay healthy and do his thing. If he, I think if it, if you give me back to back unhealthy years and he's around what twenty five or so, we're gonna start to look at shoe sponsorships probably going away. The USA spot definitely never. We're not even ever gonna look at that again. Like that'll be that's completely gone. All, if his all stars go away, that'll be a problem. No all NBAs. Eh, you know, thirteen was too high. 13 was way too high. No, not at the moment. I will say I will say he would be like Penny Hardaway. Oh, what could have been? What could have been? Got the commercials, got the flash. Team's good. Got to an NBA finals. Where the fuck is John Morant got? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Look, they made one final. I'm just talking about a really fucking great player that came in. How about this? You give him Brandon Roy. What about that? Brandon Roy? Yeah, I think it's a good one. Yeah, I think you gotta stay healthy this year. Bro. You gotta stay healthy this year, bro. And out of trouble. But, I think but even I, if he does, trouble. I mean, who are you gonna count on? Scotty Pippen Jr., Yuki no, Nakamura. We, <laughs> like, we've, <laughs> we've seen the Bane project and it didn't look good. I gave an F. That shit was trash. <laughs> he's he's a guy who has a negative wingspan in the NBA. He's a good score for what he does defensively. Eh. Jaron Jackson always needs a center to back him up because he's it great. 
at doing the verticality sometimes, but those other times, he just like he's highland. He's give me that arm out there. Give me that arm. I'm fouling the shit out of you. It's just it's gonna be it might be a tough one, bro, but we'll see, man. If if Ja can stay healthy and take the scene the playoffs, I'll think about him differently. But you'll never see him what like you got him in like the 25th play, uh, best player in the league, 30th, 35th. Yeah, somewhere between there, 25 and 35. 25 and 35, yeah. It is what it is. Uh, over under for the Spurs was 35 and a half. Where'd you got them at? In the words of Desmond Bain, do you believe we suck now? <laughs> <laughs> under. We're taking the under. And Number the... 10 in the West. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. That was the Spurs. Grizzlies. 46 and a half over under. <laughs> what was the Spurs one? I'm sorry. I thought it was the Grizzlies and I didn't 30, even listen 35 to it. 35 and a half. 35 and a half. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the under on that one too. <laughs> the Grizzlies one is kind of crazy. The, the one they had last year was really crazy. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. What is the, what's the, it's only minus 110 if you go under. Fuck, man. I want to. I put huge money on that if it could give me good return, but I'll do, hey, I, just parlay it with a bunch of the other shitty teams that you know they're going to go under. I'll yeah, parlay it with the Blazers under, the Nets under, <laughs> the fucking Hornets <laughs> under. <laughs> Get that shit up to plus three fifty. <laughs> nah, that's facts, dude. Last year the Blazers over under was twenty eight and a half. Yeah, I don't even think they won like twenty games. Let me let me let me check this shit real quick. I'm on the boys Terrible. Trailblazers last year. 21 games. Yeah. That that would have been a lock. That's a lock. Some of these teams at the bottom, it might be a lock. In the but Cooper 19... flag here, double lock it. Yeah, because this whew, man. Double hmm. lock it. All right. Let's keep it moving. All right. My number 10 team in the West is the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, Point Zion was a lot of fun. Yep. We'll never see it again because <laughs> they have no big men on their entire roster, bro. Zion is the only big on their whole roster. Yeah. They lost Jonas Valanciunas. They lost Larry, Larry Nance Jr. They yeah. lost Daniel Tice. They didn't replace him with any big men. They're just like, I guess we're just going to play 6'6 six, six, uh, Zion Williamson as the center. I'm sure he'll protect the rim, even though he's averaged less than a block a game for his career. Their starting point guard, C.J. McCollum, is six feet tall. Their starting center, Zion Williamson, is six feet six. DeJounte Murray is going to be guarding two guards again. We've already seen that ha how that happens. Herb Jones might be the best defender in the league, but I don't know if you can count on him to navigate screens, deny driving lanes, get steals, and serve as the primary rim protector. Brennan Ingram has the same offensive game as DeJounte Murray, except he's a worse passer. But yeah, they live he's... in the exact same spots and have the exact same style. These pieces just don't fit together. And I expect the Pelicans, who have a lot of draft assets and shit, to take two steps backwards this season to take three steps forward in the summer. They're going to trade Ingram. I would trade ZJ if I were them. And uh, I also have questions about their coach, Willie Green. And it's kind of Brandon Ingram's fault, and it's kind of Willie Green's fault. Yeah. The Pelicans last season were 24th in uh, three-point frequency, yeah. despite having good shooters up and down their roster. If you remember Willie Green, his calling card was a 22-foot long two-pointer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I he remember. shot more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if they're just shooting a ton of these shots because they had CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram or if their coach is like, these are good shots. These are the shots I made a career out of taking. Either way, you just add another guy in DeJounte Murray who loves taking those same bad shots, the long pull-up twos. Congratulations, New Orleans. You don't have a bench. You don't have a big. But at least you have three guys who like to shoot long twos. It's Daniel Tice in, in the West. Yeah, Daniel Tice being 6'8", 245, 250. He's gone. He's gone. Wait, what happened to him? He got hurt? He's a, no, he's on um uh 
uh, who did I say had Nick Batum? Oh, the Clippers. Yeah. They just traded him? Yeah. They traded him like, a, I don't know, a month ago. Something like that. A month ago? What? I thought they just played a preseason game with them. Am I tripping? At, at least uh, based on what I thought, I thought uh, Daniel Tice is on the Clippers. They still got him on the roster. Like, oh, shit. I t- Let me see if he played in this last game. I swear he literally just played in their preseason game like a couple days ago. That would be crazy. That'd be crazy if they – I mean, but still, even if he is the center, like he's 6'8". Yeah, he played in the, the preseason game a couple days ago. What the on fuck? The, on, the, on the 15th of October. Well, I guess I'm wrong about that. I had the wrong shit in my notes. I thought Daniel hey, Tice was playing for the don't. Clippers. It doesn't matter. He's not tall either. He's the same height as Trey Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Trey Murphy are the same height. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. No bigs. Yeah. He's not a And center, remember, bro. he was out of the league last year and then got yeah. brought in midseason. Like, it's and the now same this guy sh- who's out the league is going to start at center? Yeah, it's that same shit they always do every year. They watch these dudes play in the international ball, and they're like, oh, why is he in it on the NBA team? He looks good in this format. It's not the same basketball at all. It really isn't. I like him on the Celtics when he was doing his thing, but the Pelicans just play like just really – I don't – the way they play is just dumb. But – yeah, oh, you got that. You got them at eleven, or was this ten? Ten. Just because Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, C.J. McCollum, Dejounte Murray, Ingram, Zion—they're all good basketball players. Zion is really good. Zion was healthy last year too. If Zion, if you give me a full healthy Zion season again, even as good as the West is, I, I don't know if they're less than nine but well even so the best zion we've seen is point zion and the pelicans are going to be starting two point guards yeah it's gonna be tough man over under 45 and a half under 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 me too under for the pels double under i still love you zion where did you have them did you have them 10 or nine or something like that Adam nine yeah okay and my number nine spot terry i have the sacramento queens (laughs) (laughs) i uh i love uh the addition of demar Derozan. i think they're gonna i do i think it's gonna be really good for them in terms of closing games last year they were the worst foul shooting team in the entire nba they made 74 percent of their three free throws as a team in the clutch it was significantly worse and was bottom of the league by a wide margin yeah. Adding DeMar DeRozan to a killer uh, who won, I think De'Aaron Fox won first clutch player of the year award. So, I believe so, yeah. Now you have like two top five closers on the same team. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they're going to win a lot of close games. The question is, can they keep the games close? Because who is going to stop anybody on this team? Some bonus, terrible rim defender, yeah. bad pick and roll defender in general. Yep. The backup fours and fives are Trey Lyles, Alex Len, and Orlando Washington. Mm, that's at horrible. both at both spots, <laughs> after yeah. their bets on Sasha Vizenkov and Javale McGee, just they could have set that contract on fire. <laughs> if if, uh, if Keegan Murray misses time or Sabonis misses time. They don't have anybody who could step up and even be an NBA level player at those spots. So that's a gigantic concern for me. I might have um, step up. And then, like, in terms of the balance of the roster, they have some decent defenders. If you're going to play like Fox, Keon Ellis, Ellis Devin Carter, yeah. Keegan Murray, those are four good defenders. The problem is, Keon Ellis can't dribble or shoot. Devin Carter's a rookie, and we have no idea what he's going to give us. And Mm -hmm. Keegan Murray is now playing the four. So. Yeah. And you're paying DeRozan $23 million. So he's going to play. Yeah. 30. I just, uh, this roster doesn't make any sense. I don't like not having any bigs who can protect the rim. Like, they're just going to have to stonewall guards and wings on the perimeter and be like, you're never getting into the paint. I don't mm-hmm. see that happen with the addition of DeMar DeRozan. I know they want to avoid the play-in and, like, secure a playoff spot and all that type of stuff. 
but they're just not good enough, man. And uh, that's why I have the Kings at number nine. Yep. I agree wholeheartedly. They're going to be around that range this year, unfortunately. Roster construction doesn't make total sense. Like, I know we love the DeRozan thing, but he's so stubborn with the I don't want to shoot threes thing. I'm kind of confused as to how it's going to work at times, like at the end of games. Like, I get, you know, just give him the ball, get a bucket, but – I feel like that's just not the identity of the team. It didn't make sense when he went there. Like I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. But too many good teams in the West. Unfortunately, you know, you got to get in where you fit in. Just and this is. is where they fit at the ninth spot. Forty six and a half under. Yeah, I lo- I'm locking that. I put them in there, but injuries and shit. I don't know. These guys be healthy, so you got to watch out for them. Yeah, if they get injured, that's a double lock for the under. If Sabonis yeah. or Keegan Murray gets hurt, yeah. my God. Oh, if Sabonis gets hurt, they are. Dude, oof, those and, big men they got. You know what's depressing is they're going to be trying to be good this year, too, because they owe their first-round pick to the Hawks this year for the Kevin Herter trade. So they have mm-hmm. no incentive to try to chase Cooper Flag. They're just not going to be good enough to do anything besides make the play in. Yeah. Like, that's just the reality. What do you think now, looking back on the trade, Halliburton or Fox? Halliburton, a billion times over. I said it when it happened. And what if Fox was on the Pacers squad? What if he was on the Pacers squad? He can run fast. <laughs> like They got that he, pace, though. Is he going to be a, a top five offense into himself like Halliburton is? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I would Maybe rather have not. Halliburton. Maybe not. All right. Let's keep it moving. Number eight. The Los Angeles Lakers. Ooh, eight, eight, eight. Possible. It's possible. They're unpredictable, bro. Yeah. Um, One thing I can't predict that Anthony Davis and LeBron James are not going to play as many games this season as they did last (laughs) season. (laughs) Anthony Davis played 76 games out of 82, which is a career high. And he He was never played more than 62 games in any of the previous five seasons. LeBron James played 71 games, which is the most he's played since 2017. It's the most Um, he's played with the Lakers. Yeah. Even with that and really healthy seasons from D'Angelo Russell, who played 76 games, Austin Mm -hmm. Reeves, who played 82 games, the Lakers barely won 47 games. Their net uh, margin was less than one. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're a 500 team, and then they got curb stomped by the Nuggets again in the playoffs. So yep. with them missing more time from their top four players, I think that means the rest of the roster is going to have to be better to compensate for that, and the rest of the roster is the exact same. Oh no, they added Bronny James, Terry. He's going <laughs> to change the fortunes. <laughs> no, they actually <laughs> did add someone that's decent in Dalton Don't, Kincaid. D- D- Dalton Connect. Yeah. Dalton Connect is uh he's gonna be a good player. Dalton yeah. Kincaid plays for the Bills. No, you're um, right. I said the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it's like Dalton Connect, we're gonna depend on a rookie to be like such a high volume rotation, like creator shooter. They looked at Stuff. what Cam Reddish, Jackson Hayes, and Spence and uh, Christian Wood did last season. They're like, where can I sign up for another Run it back. years of this? Run it back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, me even having him this high is just like a testament to the faith that I have in LeBron and Anthony Davis, the center, not the yeah. power forward, mm-hmm. and my optimism about how good a coach JJ Redick is going to be. You know, last year they were great in three-point percentage, but were in bottom third in terms of attempts. Hopefully the threes that they shoot this year, are the extra ones are going to come from Connect and Reeves and Hachimura and Russell and Gabe Vincent and Mm -hmm. not Jared Vanderbilt, Anthony Davis, and Cam Reddish, which I'm a little concerned about. But the Lakers do have flexibility. After not doing much this summer, LeBron agreed for less than a max. They can aggregate a bunch of their salaries and get a blockbuster deal. They can uh, trade uh, D'Angelo Russell, who's on an expiring, to kind of be the backbone of that. 
They can use their first round picks in 2029 and 20, 2031 and attach them to Russell. And I think they will. I think they know this is their last go around with LeBron, like as a legitimate guy who can help you win a championship and not just a fourth banana or whatever in the starting lineup. And yeah. I think LeBron is going to apply a crazy amount of pressure and JJ Reddick over the course of the season to make an in-season trade. Now, whether this in-season trade is a nothing burger like Zach Levine or it's somebody who could actually help them like Lowry Markkinen, I don't fucking know. But I have a feeling this roster is not going to be the same when the trade deadline comes around. Unfortunately, it's probably going to take until the trade deadline for them to make this move because other teams usually drag their feet and try to get like the best value they can. So they're stuck with this roster until February. And I'm not particularly impressed. That's why I got him eighth in the eighth in the West. They have too many people. They need to figure out like actually what the roster is going to be. Like last year, it was just too many guys. Like I don't, I don't, you know, and I don't think Darvin Ham was the best coach in the world, but it's just too much Cam Reddish. I I don't particularly like Gabe Vincent playing a lot of minutes because he wasn't really giving me a lot. Jackson Hayes, unfortunately, has to play a lot because they don't really have another big. Max Christie wasn't knocking down any threes, even though he's a fantastic defender. Christian Wood didn't give me a whole lot. He was inconsistent. He'd give me a good game if he played a couple minutes. Next game, he wouldn't score more than five points. Hey, I, like I all- said before the season, if LeBron can turn Christian Wood into a playoff caliber uh, <laughs> player, it'll be the greatest achievement of his whole career. It did not happen. Let's just uh, say that. <laughs> so, I mean, but, like, the top of their roster, I do like. I do like Anthony Davis. I do like Rui. I do like LeBron, of course. I do like Dalton. Connect. I, yeah. I do like. You like Reeves. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, and I like Reeves. Everybody else, I'm not sure yet. You know, shout out Bronny. The fo- the whole father son thing is going to be nice to see. We really don't know what JJ Reddick is going to give us all year, and Jared Vanderbilt can't seem to stay healthy or knock down a corner three. So and, I don't and know. They wasted a first round pick on Jalen Hood Shafino, who can't do anything. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man. I don't know. We we shall see how the season goes, but I like them around that range, and honestly. LeBron, love LeBron. He's my favorite player in the world. I think he's better than Michael Jordan. Sometimes they look better without him. Not going to lie. I don't like the late game stupid ass fadeaway. If he misses it, he's completely out of the play. If the other team gets the rebound and they're gone. I also don't like that he shoots a bunch of three. Even though last year, highest percentage he's ever shot in his career. I need some stats on his clutch threes. I'm gonna have to look it up. I'll probably that it might be the thing I focus on. His like last right. five minute fourth quarter three point percentage. Gotta stop with the long threes, dog. Keep attacking the basket. He kind of kills me with that. The momentum is gone. You know, Reeves was on fire a lot. AD was on fire a lot. We come down, LeBron shoots a three. What the fuck are we doing? He also did this. He did that in the Olympics. <laughs> hey, and they wanted to trade Trey Young there. <laughs> <laughs> God, please, no one take him. He's a lot. Li- he's a liability. Trey Young's a liability. No, he even did it with this team right here on my chest, the U.S. Olympic basketball team. When France started making their little comeback, not in between when Steph was on fire, but you know, nobody was really making a bucket for a couple minutes. I wasn't worried about it. But oh, here's LeBron trying to take a forty foot three. Here's the nail on the coffin, Bang. right off the front rim. I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes. Love him. Like I said, love him. I think he's you the... you think they're he... going to make a trade? Do you think they're going to make a trade? Nah. I don't think so. I think they're done with the uh, asset thing. They don't really, like... I know that... Then, the, just... then eight is too high. <laughs> then eight is too high. <laughs> it's just a lot on the books, and nobody wants D'Angelo Russell. And I don't... They don't want to give up Rui or Austin Reeves. So, like, I don't see anything happening. That's going to be, like, helpful to the team winning yeah. games. We, we, so. we can't trade Rui Hachimura or an undrafted free agent. <laughs> we we couldn't well, do that, that. Who are you going to trade them for that brings back what they do for this team that helps a lot? I also don't – like, they don't need to start a point guard. Stop with that. Gabe Fisson doesn't need to start. No. 
Just stay big. But the thing is, the thing is, LeBron doesn't want to guard ones. He doesn't want to chase these guys around the perimeter. He, he can't wants to guard ones. On, that's yeah, the problem. So, so that's why they th- that's why they have to play a point guard because it's like who's going to guard the fucking point guard? They need to trade Reeves to be honest with you. What do you think about that? I'd do it tomorrow. <laughs> it's like yeah, that's who the, the fuck thing. Is they don't, Austin Reeves. They don't want to like, get are rid of him. me. The only Bro. reason that people suck his dick is because he plays for the Lakers. If it's Austin the, Reeves is putting up 17 points for the Blazers, nobody would give a flying fuck. It's the it's the Knicks Lakers effect. You put what? any any person on the Knicks or Lakers that's white or Asian or not a black person. <laughs> it's the best player I've seen in my life. This guy you can't trade him. His buckets are immaculate. He's the most clutch player I've ever seen. Realistically. Oh, in in yeah. unrelated news, be prepared to see way too much of Yuki, whatever the fuck his name, for the Grizzlies <laughs> on social media this season. He's going to be sure. another oh, yeah. the, 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 the yellow-tinted Facundo Composo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah now Reeves is, Reeves, Reeves is good but he is um he's more of like a fifth option and the Lakers are using him as like a second or third that's the problem yeah. all right uh 40 all right. I think 45 and a half is the over under let me check uh Lakers Ooh. 43 and a half actually I'll take the over on 43 and a half yeah that's what I, I say yes. take the, I would have taken the under at 45 and a half I think they're 44 45 yeah, I think they're getting 44 to 45 wins. All right, keep it moving. All righty, next up, another aging superstar from our past, Terry. Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry ah, are number seven here. Definitely Steph. The uh, good this, news, is the only, this is the only one we disagreed on, by the way. You had them higher or lower? Lower. I thought about it, man. It yeah, it was hard with me and the Warriors. At the end of the day, I think it's going to be a good thing that Clay Thompson is, is gone. Mm-hmm. You know, I said I would have traded him two seasons ago, and they just they're like, oh, every game they're like, we got to get Clay going. We we mm-hmm. got to get him back on track. He means so much to the franchise. We 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 got to get his ego up. We we can't disrespect Clay's legacy and give him four shots a game. Yes, the fuck you can. The dude is washed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the problems that I have with this uh, Warriors team are the amount of questions I have going into this season. Can Draymond Green keep from assaulting somebody this season? <laughs> is anybody good enough to be a playoff level secondary creator? Will the real Andrew Wiggins please stand up? I think is gone. Jonathan Kaminga good at basketball? Can Trace Jackson Davis? actually build on a rookie year and be the team's one center size player? Will Moses Moody get any chances at continuity this year after playing well in spot starts for four fucking years? I I have so many questions for the Lakers this season, but I do like the depth that they've accrued. I do like the offseason moves that they made. DeAnthony Melton, I think, is going to be a good defensive and transition player for them. Yeah. Um, you know, especially at a position that was a wasteland last season because Gary Payton never played like he played like one fucking week the whole season mm-hmm. up front. I really like the sign of Kyle Anderson, especially since he's replacing Dario Saric. Yeah. Uh, I think he's better than Saric at everything, but their skill sets align and he's like a more tuned up version. He's probably even going to play point guard when Curry comes out of the game with those second units. Because yeah. there's not like a true point guard besides him on the roster. And then I'm just gonna say it. Buddy Hield is better than Clay Thompson at this point in his career. He washed out of playoff rotations, but has shot better for the last five seasons. He's younger, he's a fraction of the price, he's more effective shooting at the cup. He's a bit better on defense. And when I look at this team, I see a deep team that are 12 rotation players deep. Curry, Green, Wiggins, Podjemski, Trace Jackson Davis, Kaminga, Melton, Kyle Anderson, uh, Buddy Heald, Moses Moody, Gary Payton, and Kevon Looney. So Mm -hmm. these are all credible NBA players. They are not guys who suck at basketball, but they don't have any needle movers. 
are like really going to catapult them into in, into championship contention. So I think they're going to the play in again, and uh, that's why I put them number seven. Well, when they get there, I hope they win because I'd like to see Steph Curry uh, play some playoff basketball again. That'd be nice. Uh, last time we saw him, besides the play in, uh, he was winning a championship. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's another one of those like we know these names on the roster because of the playoff runs. And I'm not actually sure if they're good. You know what I'm saying? I do. Like, also, Buddy Healed. He's not, not the better same than Buddy Clay Healed. Thompson? No, 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 no. I'm not saying he's not better than Clay, <laughs> but I think he also isn't good, if I'm if I'm gonna be completely honest. With myself, I don't, he's not. I think, I think he'll look good in this situation. I hope. Yeah, he's, he's going to get to do what he does well. I hope. I will say though, what was he with Rick Carlisle at the end, or did they already trade him to? I think Philly at that point. No, they traded him to Philly by the playoffs, but he was before with, uh, Carlisle. He, in he the was Pacers with Carlisle most of the season. Yeah, most so of I, the season last year. I think that's 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 the thing I'm worried about with him. That's one of the better offensive systems, and he didn't look good in it. He did, didn't, but so he I, did hit forty seven percent of his threes there. You know, yeah. did start. You know, once he went to Philly, they're like, "Oh, you can't even play in regular yeah, season." Philly. I don't know what the fuck happened there. Philly, but when he left him. the Pacers, he was a fucking starter. Yeah, he was. No, he was. I don't know what happened to him. I, hopefully there's a resurgence. I'm not sure. Um, love Steph, of course. Kyle Anderson's probably going to work. Draymond showed signs of being a little washed. He's 34, 6'6". Six, six. Ultimately, I think this is why Bob Myers left. Steph, uh, Steve Kerr is just opposed to playing young dudes. I don't know why he won't just start them. I think he probably has no choice this year, but like, you got to do it now or it's over, my guy. We got to see what's up. The only one who confuses me is Moody. Like, he I can understand shoot. why he doesn't want to play Kuminga. I yeah, completely get it. I under, like, last year he gave minutes to Pods. You know, he played, mm-hmm. he was like a six man for them. Yeah. They played Tr- Trace Jackson Davis in the starting lineup a lot. So Sometimes, it's like, yeah. I don't think Steve Kerr hates playing young players. I think he hates playing guys who suck at basketball. And that's no, why no. James Wiseman and Jonathan Kaminga <laughs> barely played. No, what I'm saying is Bob Myers left before last year, right? So, like, last year, Steve Kerr started to play some of the young dudes. He's the, like, hopefully he continues the cycle, though, because if you don't, then what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? There was supposed to, where's the bridge? It was supposed to be a bridge. Uh, the bridge is, is it Wiggins. Mark- is it Wiggins' fault that they don't, the bridge didn't work? No, it's Bob know. Myers. He got out of there before people could blame him. Uh, to <laughs> take a Wiseman so you, over LaMelo Ball. So you blame taking uh, fucking Bob Kaminga Myers. over 10 different people. Like You don't like Kaminga? Oh, no, I don't like Kaminga. No, what what is there to like about Kaminga? He defends? Cool. Hey, He's physical? Yeah. Cool. I could find that from fucking two-way players. I could find that from an NFL player. Yeah. All what right. skill does he have? He can't initiate the offense. He's a poor he can, passer. He, can he can't dunk. shoot. His finishing package sucks. Like, I, on, I'm man. sorry. I, I don't see it with Kaminga. Remember last year when I was like, Jalen Johnson is going to be better than Kaminga? Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, what? This is crazy. Like, Jalen yeah, yeah, Johnson yeah. couldn't even play at Duke. <laughs> now, he didn't want to play. <laughs> now, Steph Curry's on the up escalator and Kaminga's on the down. No, that's facts. But no, honestly, though, the the number one reason, though, they didn't fix the uh, the big problem. They can't stop the Nuggets, and the Lakers bully them. So yeah. until they – and the Timberwolves are still a larger-ish team, even though they're not great, great. The Thunder added some big guys. Dallas has big guys. Phoenix has big guys. Those teams are the teams you're going to see in the playoffs, and I don't. they can't beat them. They're too small. They're not going to be in the playoffs, Terry. They're going to be in the play-in. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, those teams are going to bully you all year. You're going to lose to them. But they'll have a decent regular season. So I had them number seven. Uh, What's their over-under for the old Warriors? How high? You know Vegas loves them. Warriors. Oh, 
43 and a half. Push. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you can't push. It's 43 I'm not, and a half. I'm not betting it. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pick one, where would you go? I, I'd go under for me. I'd go over just because I said the, the Lakers are going to be 44, 45, and I have yeah. them a half game maybe above the Lakers. That's how tight it's going to be. Yeah. So I guess by default, I have to go over, but I would not bet that shit. Yeah, that'd be a tough one. They won 46 last year and were the 10 seed. Pretty much the yeah. same teams are still like bad and good, except for the Clippers are gone and they're probably <laughs> <laughs> And people gave up on the Grizzlies finally. Yeah, pretty much. So there's nine spots. I I would just put Warriors are nine, ten, eleven to me, but you know, I don't I don't have a problem because Steph is amazing and the structure of the team. But let's keep it moving. So we just talked about how like most of the teams are the same from last year. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about a team that I think is a little different. And that's uh, my different. number six team in the West, the Houston Rockets. Oh, yeah. There they are. The Houston Rockets have a ton of talent, and they have a great coach. Last year, they went 41 and 41, but their point differential was higher than the Warriors and the Lakers and the Kings. They mm -hmm. finished the season 16 and 7. They showed that that potential they show can be harnessed into some type of end product onto the court. Yep. Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks arrived last year and added some professionalism to a pretty young group over there where guys who are able to communicate Ime Adoka's defensive schemes and knew where they were supposed to be on that end of the court. But the story of Houston is not the two veterans. It's their seven players who are aged 23 or younger. And all of them have a shot at being part of the long-term future. The best one is Shangun. I mm -hmm. thought he was better than Sabonis for my money last season. Yep. Too much is made of Houston going on an 11-game win streak with Shangun out for uh, most of them. Six of the nine wins were against teams that had tanked the whole season and were not yep. competing. Mm -hmm. And then the Rockets lost five immediately in a row right after that stretch. So yeah. all the people are like they're better without Shangun. Yeah, when they play the Wizards, <laughs> like <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's the it's the same thing with the John Moran thing. Like, yeah, they can win some games versus some fucking bums, but they're actually not good without this guy. This guy's really good. Like yeah. Shangun is really good. I I completely agree. You know, his fit with some of their non shooters is a bit wonky at times especially Ahmed Thompson, who at least was able to not airball more shots than he <laughs> hit from three last season. <laughs> his brother. Yeah, but he is an elite athlete. He has ball skills. He has energy. He can play multiple positions. He has breakout potential. And I think Adoka is a good enough coach that he's going to put him in positions to succeed and not positions that his brother was in Detroit where he's surrounded by guys that don't fit with him. Yeah. Um, I think Jalen Green can score 20 in his sleep. Yeah. And finally realized that you're allowed to play defense last season yep. uh, under Ime you, Adoka. Green would be one of those guys if he was a Laker or a Nick. We literally would be holding his jock shred. Like, yeah. 100%. 100%. Uh, Reed Shepard, probably front runner for rookie of the year. Looked yeah, great in the summer league. Yeah. Cam Maybe. Whitmore missed it's a lot of one his... ball. It's only one ball, though. Out there in Houston, he's, he's a he's a good distributor though. I, I like I think Reed Shepard will be good for getting everyone involved. Yeah. I like Cam Whitnor. You yeah. know he fell down to draft, missed a lot of his first season, but he could shoot. He can defend. He plays above the rim. Tari Eason is another good three and D wing who mm -hmm. plays physical. Is a tr transition monster. Uh, he'll be back from injury. Their second unit is going to be up tempo and is going to be running up and down the court getting stops. And uh, Jabari Smith really started to come on on the second half of last season. He looked really comfortable as a stretch five or a stretch four. Um, and, you know, then they have Houston. They have all these, like, treasure trove of assets that if they mm -hmm. ever decide, like, hey, we're close, they could push some of these assets in the middle of the table. Uh, they got a ton of picks back in the, uh, the Bridges trade that they helped facilitate this summer. Yep. They got multiple future unprotected firsts from Phoenix. Um, those are all going to be high picks. Yep. They have a, enough expiring money in like 
guys who they can just attach picks to that's not going to affect the rotation. You know, they got Jeff Green, they got Jock Landale, they got Jay Sean Tate. Mm-hmm. Putting those guys together is $45 million that they can match with any income and salary. So I think Ime Adoka is ready to win now. I think this roster is really talented. I think they're going to be like, if it starts well, there's going to be some pressure on the GM to be like, hey, why don't we go ahead and make a push right now and see what we have? Because we have plenty of flexibility in the future, got plenty of cap space, got plenty of draft picks. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're ready to contend this year, but I do think they're on the way. And uh, I have them securing a playoff spot in the West. Yeah, no, I don't don't disagree. I think they're going to be pretty good. Um, If you were to pick, though, because it's, it's, you know, ultimately it's a lot of dudes. Who's falling out of the rotation? Of the seven young dudes, which one or two would you say are, are not going to play what they think they're going to play this year? Who's playing the least amount of minutes? Maybe Cam Whitmore again, just because he's such a good defender. Yeah. yeah. I can Maybe. see that. I can see that. It's a lot of dudes. I mean, I know a lot of people like to say that the Hawks – Couple like last year or maybe a couple years ago, they thought it was too many good players on the roster or whatever. I think Mm -hmm. the difference between what the Rockets have and a lot of the other teams where you think like, oh, it's too many good dudes, there's only one basketball. Literally all of them play different positions. They all fit. Yeah. Like they one's a point guard, one's a shooting guard, there's a couple forwards, and there's a big guy. They fit. They fit together. It's a team. So I think they're gonna work out, man. And Eme, you know. Stay away. Stay <laughs> away. <laughs> well, well, I think that's why he went to Houston because uh he talked to his buddy Charles Barkley and he told him there's nothing but a bunch of big women down there. <laughs> In Houston? I thought that was the San yeah. Antonio thing, but I yeah. guess the whole old it's Texas spreading. thing. It's spreading. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, my boy. Houston's got a lot of things down there. That's all I can say. All right. Yeah. Let's keep where did oh, where uh, did you have them? By the way, where did you have the Rockets? Houston, seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So again, around the same range. No, Number really five good. on my list. Wait, over under for Houston. Mm. Forty two and a half. Over. All right. Lock it. Lock it in. Whoa! I'm not gonna lock it, but I'd go over. Lock it, baby. Forty three wins. By That's the okay. way, they were forty one and forty one last year. Yeah. They can't get 42 this year? Ah, it's a tough. It's, it's a tough West. I think people got the number, too, though. You know what I'm saying? You can't sneak up on people this year because they got a yeah, whole they, season's worth of what you were doing. They defend so, really fucking well. Uh, now they I, do. I'm high on the Rockets. They do. We'll, we'll see. They might be higher than what we even think. But, ah, man, I think 43 wins, two win improvement. They have to improve, like, the away uh, – Wins record, they're 14 and 27. They were pretty good at home for a young team. But a lot of times, you know, with the young team or teams that aren't locked in together, the away record's kind of trash. Let's just see what they can do on the road, man. You know? Yeah. I think they can get to 47, 48. I do. Yeah. All right. Coming up next, number five in the Western Conference, it's the Minnesota Timberwolves. You know, Minnesota mm-hmm. did so well last season. Everything was going right for them. Anthony Edwards broke out as a superstar, a two-way player, a crunch time player. The big man combo of Rudy Gobert and Cat worked. Rudy yeah. won defensive the player of the year. Nas Reed won six man. Jalen Jaden McDaniels is recognized as one of the best defenders in the league. And everyone was healthy the whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, except for Carl Anthony Towns, who did miss 20 games. But the rest of their core was stupid healthy. The other members of the top eight in their rotation only missed 26 games between them. Yeah, Um, that's amazing. Which is really important for a team that didn't really have good depth. Their ninth used uh, player for the season last year only played 600 minutes. So literally insane levels of health and reliability up and down like their rotation. I don't think that's going to happen again this year. They lost Kyle Anderson and Carl Anthony Towns, but they brought in Dante DiVincenzo and Julius Randle and the corpse of Joe Ingles. Um, (laughs) I think that 
the fit of Randall and DiVincenzo on this team is horrible. I think this is a terrible trade for the Timberwolves. DiVincenzo? I, DiVincenzo, one of the 10 worst defenders in the entire NBA last season. Yeah, he's not Des- <laughs> despite playing against like all good defenders who are around him <laughs> the entire year. Uh, yeah. I don't know, Jalen Brunson. Yeah, he could catch and shoot, but like, who is he going to guard? He can't play alongside Conley. Because, like, who's going to guard twos then? He's not going to be, like, a true point guard to run the second unit because we've seen that he's not a good enough passer to do that. Yeah. Where does that leave Rob Dillingham, who they just traded up for to get in the top ten picks of the draft to go select, who's yeah. also an all-offense combo guard? Yeah. Julius Randle is, like, a supersized, worst version of Anthony Edwards. <laughs> he, he likes to do the exact same shit as Anthony Edwards. <laughs> Same spots, yeah. same rhythm dribbles, same pull up threes, same ball yeah. stopping tendencies. Yeah. Except he's a, a worse shooter than Towns was to provide the spacing. And he yeah. can't guard bigs like Cat did either. Imagine mm-hmm. Julius Randle going one on one with Jokic. Like, <laughs> just laughable. Um, but still, this team has a good, solid defensive foundation with Gobert, McDaniels, Edwards. Nas Reed and Alexander Walker are really good bench players. I can see them regressing a little bit because of the uh, the impact of the trade and that they're not going to be as healthy. But I still see them securing a playoff seed in the West and finish number five. I have Minnesota at eight. And I was Whoa! honestly – Honestly, I mean, I think you and I are in agreement as, like, we don't think the trade works at all. No. But – the front office now over time the Rudy Gobert trade isn't as laughed at as it was when it first happened because he's played pretty well like we can agree on that he was hurt I think what either the year before last but he's played well since the trade has happened Julius Randle doesn't fit man he does not fit with his team I watched him play for multiple years the Knicks he fit with us when it was just him, when Brunson got there, it was a little shaky, but, you know, he, he tried to do some things to help it out. But, unfortunately, he can't shoot threes. That's not his forte. He's an ISO guy. He's a ball stopper. He gets buckets, but also not the greatest defender I've ever seen. Also, a little bit of a malcontent if things aren't going his way. It's not going to work, guys. And I'm surprised I didn't hear any of this on any of the media podcasts I listen to or any of the basketball pods I listen to. I don't know what's up, but you can't fool my eyes. Like I said, (laughs) if Minnesota's good, I won't talk basketball anymore. But this team currently constructed with no trades is not a good basketball team. I like what I saw last night, too. It's the offense for me, not the defense. Yeah, they're gonna, I, like, they're, I think they have such a good defensive foundation that they're going to be 500. They're going to yeah, be 500 just no, because no, no. of the they're, defense. They're gonna be, I think they're still going to win like 44, 45 games. Easy, but mm-hmm. it's the offensive laws, bro. You got to be able to score in this league or you're getting blown out. You're going to get blown out. Like, for instance, last night, we saw the game last you didn't. You didn't watch the game last night. The Lakers, were, last night. the Lakers were pretty much blowing them out the whole fucking game. The Timberwolves were struggling to score all four quarters. Anthony Edwards made it a close game. No one else really did a whole lot. Devin Chinzo couldn't buy a fucking three to save his life. Randall looked awful. I don't re- know what his final numbers were, but he looked horrible. The fit wasn't working. Rudy Gobert sucks offensively. Great defender. Great, you know, blocking shots and shit. But on the back end, Rudy Gobert is going for the block. Randall linked there to clean it up on the backside. He's a lazy defender. He's a lazy rebounder. He gave up a lot of offensive rebounds. And we don't even have Hardenstein, and they still gave up a shitload of offensive rebounds to us, the Knicks. I don't like it, bro. Minnesota's not going to be good. Anthony, All right. put some pressure on them. They need to trade. I, I, I wish I had your guts to go for this because I really did want to drop them down lower. Yeah. I don't like this team. I don't, I don't like the, the construction like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. I don't like how the pieces fit together. But I'm just like, they just have so much competency with a good coach and a solid defense. 
It's like, I just don't know how far you guys are going to slip. Yep. But do I think they're contenders like they were considered last oh, year no. where they can legitimately win the NBA? Absolutely not. No. I'm, hey, I'm out on ask, ask Luka Doncic about, uh, you know, if they don't take <laughs> shit serious. He missed the playoffs. <laughs> and I know they tanked a couple, you know, three or four games. That don't matter. If it doesn't fit, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter who's on the team or not. Does not matter, bro. Anthony Edwards is a top five player. Yes. Doesn't matter. This team doesn't fit together. It's game time. Anthony Edwards isn't a top 10 player, but I digress. Oh, what is going on? Where are we right now? Planet are Earth. We, welcome. Are we talking about basketball? You, you were you were living in John ja Morant explosion land where players are rated higher just because of their likability and highlights. And I live in the real world where guys like Shangun and Jokic dominate the NBA. <laughs> and the Edwards is not a top 10 player? He's not. I had if a you think he's not a NBA team? last year. I had Bro, a third if, team all NBA. I'm just saying though, if he's not a top 10 NBA player. Yeah. Americans are for, cooked. We're done for. There's no future. The children are not the future. They're the past. Gold medal, baby. <laughs> if Anthony Edwards is not a top 10 player, then how can you have them as a five seed? This team doesn't make sense. Because the defensive foundation. I believe in no. Gobert on that end. I believe in McDaniels on that end. Mm -hmm. I believe in Nas Reed on that end. I believe in Anthony Edwards on that end. Mm -hmm. It's not like Anthony Edwards sucks just because I don't think he's a top 10 no, no, guy. No, no, no. I'm not he's saying He's a top I'm 12 guy. I'm you know what that. I mean? No. But I just think top 10 is a little too rich considering how he disappeared in the playoffs in the Western Conference Finals. And nah. uh, that's really been his only run. You got to score at least 110. Where are they going to find it? That's all I'm saying. Over, under. I'm going under. Whatever it is, I'm under. It is. I bet you it's high because they're stupid. Ah, oh, 51 and a half. Under. Stop it. Under. We're both 51 under. and a half. Come on, bro. Look, I'm about to bet $600 on Man, that. That's, a, that's a lock. Lock that in, Terry. That's a lock. Brother, I, I'm about to sell my car. They got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to put big money on that. That's crazy. 51 and a half. Man. Oh, I'm, I'm getting on top of that. I let that Christian McCaffrey injury get on top of me. I'm not letting this one slip by my fingers. Not, hey. not, not. Uh -huh. Speaking of getting on top, Barcelona just scored in the first minute of the game against Bayern on a breakaway. <laughs> Let's fucking go. All right. Uh, number four team in the Western Conference. This hurts my heart to say it, Terry, but I got the Denver Nuggets. In this spot okay there's nothing wrong with it i think that their gm should be arrested for the malpractice that he's committed against this roster <laughs> in the last two yeah, seasons it's it's kind of crazy since they won the championship last year terry they've lost bruce brown jeff green and kcp for nothing mm -hmm. michael porter jr has not improved one bit jamal mm -hmm. murray has regressed none of the young players have stepped up Promoting Christian Brown to a starter doesn't seem like a good move for me, mm -hmm. um, especially if he's going to continue to not shoot threes. Like yeah, he's he got so knocked far, threes. He's got to. And not make them. You know, Caldwell Pope shot eight and a half threes per 100 possessions. Christian Brown shot four and a half and made significantly less of them than Caldwell mm -hmm. Pope did at his eight. The bench, uh, this might be the worst bench in the NBA. This is the, that's how oh, this this roster is bad, bro. Yeah, this uh, they replaced their shitty veterans from last year in Reggie Jackson and Justin Holiday with Dario Saric and Russell Westbrook. Let's Somehow, talk Westbrook, bro. I, I I don't think Russell Westbrook is going to fix the three point shooting problem that this team has had for several seasons. Let's talk Westbrook. Why? Why? It makes no sense. They just need somebody who's going to try to do something when Jokic is <laughs> off the court. Like, <laughs> Yo, he fit. I, I don't know. He fit the Clippers. If now, I there is a world where I do see until this until the playoffs came and then he fit out like Kevin Love a little bit. I, there is a world where I do see that he did eighty percent of what Bruce Brown did. You know what I'm saying? But but Bruce Brown also could knock down an open three when and it was there. Guard. And I was about to say that the defense is a lot better. Now, Russell does try, you know, doing different things. But, like, there is a world where I see, like, 
Westbrook is getting a lot of like the dunks and shit, but I don't really remember Bruce Brown and Aaron Gordon getting stuck in the same spots because Bruce Brown can still kind of shoot. Now Westbrook and Gordon are pretty much horrific fit. Do the horrific same fit. things offensively. Like as far as like off ball stuff. So I don't this is going to be interesting, man. I mean, I know Jokic is amazing, but fuck, bro. Ron couldn't do how, it. I, how much faith do you have in Dario Saric as the backup center? Related question. Guess how many up. shots Dario Saric has blocked in the four <laughs> past seasons combined. How many shots has he blocked in the last four years total? Eight. 21. Oof. Dang, that's a lot more than I thought. I ain't gonna lie. Out of 320 games, he's how tall is he? Shots he's like 6'8. Big man. He's 6'10. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, man, dude. That guy. Yeah. Jokic is better than the he's really good, <laughs> but I oof, man. I don't know, man. This is crazy. Hey, God love this strategy of letting all your good role players leave and then replacing them with like 35th picks in the draft and being yeah. like, I'm sure these guys are going to be ready. So, so see, guess what? The only first round pick they've had in forever, Deron Holmes just fucking broke his yeah. leg or whatever. And he looked he looked like he was a, he was on his way too. He was looking <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah, they, they looked great in summer league, out for the whole yeah. season. So Julius what, DeAndre Strother, Hunter's not going to – Hunter's not playing – I mean, uh, DeAndre Jordan's not going to play over Sarge? DeAndre Jordan didn't do shit last year. He barely played. <laughs> He's the motivational, like, Udonis Hosla- Haslam guy. Gotcha, he, he, gotcha. he can't play actual NBA minutes anymore. Zeke They're Nagy? hoping Julian Strother can can play it. Zeke Naji, they just gave $32 million for some Nobody. reason that I'll never know, <laughs> considering that not only was he frozen out of the playoff rotation, but the regular season rotation – for the last two years, and they yeah. gave this guy $8 million a season. The bottom line with the Nuggets is this. The top four players are good, and the rest of this roster sucks ass. And yeah. only Nikola Jokic could drag this group to a top four finish in the West, and it's exactly what the fuck he's going to do with Aaron Gordon next to him in the trenches. This team has no shot to win an NBA championship. They have no flexibility to go make moves and, and shake this roster up. Calvin Booth should be arrested and had rotten tomatoes thrown at him in a fucking stockade. And congratulations, Denver. You managed to waste the prime of the greatest player in your franchise's history. Let's give him a round of applause. Good stuff. Uh, I think you're completely right. I think this is where I kind of have the argument with people that are saying, like, the West is revamped and fucking back. I think the West sucks. I ain't gonna lie. I know I, I said earlier... You know, some of these teams are better when we were talking around the Pelicans range, around the Kings range. This might be a tougher season for Minnesota and Denver than what I originally thought when I was looking at this. I I, I predicted it with Minnesota, even though Ant is good, but he's 6'4". You know what I'm saying? Jokic is a giant beast who can pass and kind of control the game, but... That's some tough people around him. He doesn't have shooting around him, man. I mean... I, you guys can do all this cutting if you want to. We might play a 2-3 zone. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a lot of 2-3 zones going on out here. Jamal Murray and Porter, you better have fantastic, amazing, healthy seasons because this could be a tough one. Well, it does look good he, for Jamal Murray after he p- finished the playoffs playing like ass and then somehow made it even worse for Canada. Yeah. But, um, I mean, look, Jokic dragged this team to the playoffs a couple of years ago with no one on it. So, they, they, they'll they probably do He'll do it again. Yeah. God damn, is okay. Nikolo Jokic amazing? Too bad. I... You, do you want to know a – um? you want a stat, Terry? Give me a stat. And I got – I got a – I got – I know what Calvin Booth is doing. But give me a stat. Nikola Jokic, the three-time MVP, the finals yeah. MVP, Should has four never time. played – has never played with another all NBA player in his career. And mm-hmm. the only time he played with an all star was the one season where Jamal Murray was selected as an injury replacement after like four guards got hurt. I didn't even know Jamal Murray even made it. I thought he still hadn't made one ever. Maybe he didn't. 
maybe he has never played with an all star. This is my own stats. This wasn't gleaned from the internet, Terry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't think Jamal Murray made the all star team yeah. ever, bro. Well, in that case, he's never played with an all star in his yeah. whole career. This oh. is malpractice by the Nuggets front office. It's Calvin horrible. Booth. His Can name you Calvin... name another three time MVP who never played with an all star in his whole career? It's never happened in the history because it doesn't happen. <laughs> what the fuck? Can, can you name another uh, back-to-back MVP whose own fans couldn't watch their team's games because their uh, owner of the oh team was God. too cheap to have a cable yeah. deal? That's like, crazy. The fish rots from the head down. They have a terrible owner. Their team was really good, and they bamboozled us into thinking they were going to go into luxury tax. They're not mm-hmm. in the luxury tax. They're not in the second apron. They're not trying to make this team better. They have no uh, desire whatsoever. Let's just take it second round picks, letting our rotation players go, and hopefully these 24-year-old rookies that we draft 35th overall will be rotation players overnight. It doesn't fucking work like that. Yeah. I'm so pissed at the Nuggets for squandering what could have been like a multi-year run and yeah. reducing my favorite player in the league to a guy who has to just like – be the greatest player ever so that they can win fucking 45 games. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're doing exactly what the Chicago Cubs did. They're just like, oh, yeah, we won the championship. You guys happy? Because we're done with that championship shit. (laughs) (laughs) That shit is over. Celebrate this like you can. Party like there's no tomorrow. Because guess what? There ain't no tomorrow. We're done. This shit is over with. Plus, I know what Cal Booth is doing. Look at my shirt. He's sneaking it, dude. He's making Jokic quit. Jokic might retire from the NBA because at the end of the day, he's going to look at this fucking roster and be like, damn, if Jamal Murray gets hurt, I'm getting the fuck out of here and just raising horses, dude. I'm not doing this shit anymore. Hold on. Th- thought experiment time. What if Jokic tore his Achilles and missed the whole season? What would this Nuggets team's record be? Do they have a first round pick if that happens? They, no. they have their they don't no, have their own. They don't have a first round pick. No. Trade it How up and go get the guy who hurt himself this year. Gave Ooh, up t- their pick next um, year. With no Jokic. Healthy Murray, healthy Porter, Braun, Westbrook. Oh, I didn't say healthy Murray, healthy Porter. Just the regular team, how it always is, if they didn't have Nikola Jokic. Uh 37, 35 wins, maybe. That's generous. <laughs> That's generous as fuck. <laughs> well, how many how many wins did they get last year? Let me look at this. They had God, man, 57 wins. Ah, uh, yeah. 30 uh, 35. They can't be any worse than what LeBron, like the Cavs when LeBron left. What was their record when he left? Like 28? I think it would be around there if Jokic got hurt. I really do. This roster is horrible, bro. I'm going to check This roster that. When, is goddamn awful. When does LeBron Nikola go? Nikola Jokic is worth like 18 wins by himself. <laughs> I think he's worth more, to be honest. I think he's worth more. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at that Cavs thing. I, could, I think I can find it. I got it. 2000... 2018, 2019, they had 19 wins, the Cavs. 2017, Cavs got, yep, so that was it. They won 19 games when LeBron left. I think it would be around there. Uh, I think it would be like 25 wins. 20 wins with Jamal Murray and Porter? Maybe, dude, but I don't know. He is worth the shitload of wins. Who who would Jamal uh, Murray's pick and roll partner be? Zeke Najee? Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Jamal <laughs> Murray ain't shit without Jokic. He's like a Austin Reeves without Jokic. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Jamal Murray might Reeves. be the most overrated player in the whole league. He's better than Reeves, though. Marginally. Not like we talk about him. Like, we're like, oh, Jamal Murray and Jokic, Kobe and Shaq. Who is better, Jamal Murray and his run or Kobe and Shaq's run in 2001? This is what people are fucking saying when they won a championship. Well, now they we're like, that... is Austin Reeves worse than him? Hmm, let's debate nah, it. Nah, 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 nah. Well, the, come on, bro. You Give him that just that one playoff run. I think he's probably just as good as Donovan Mitchell, healthy. 
I think Jamal Murray is just as good as Donovan Mitchell healthy because he showed it to us years ago when Jokic wasn't there. Now, no, Jokic was there. I'm tripping. Now, yeah, he just can't stay healthy. I think he's good, but Donovan Mitchell was like a six-time All Star. Jamal Murray is a zero-time All Star. Jamal I, Murray I, I can't, can't stay healthy. Part. He never, he's Jamal, never healthy. He also to... can't play good for three months in a row. Even when he is healthy, <laughs> he starts the season off shooting 30% from the field every year. Hey, look, in the one playoff run when they were healthy, he, I think he was averaging like 28. You know, yeah, like, he was when... nasty in the bubble. He was nasty in the playoffs when they won the other championship. Yeah. Apart from then, what have we seen from Jamal? That's like four months of his whole career. Four months. You deserve two hundred million after four. I'm just saying that's the new, that's the new NBA we live in, dog. He's one of the top thirty players in the NBA. It's Nuggets, unfortunate. You guys disappoint me so much. The entire Ooh, front office should be fucking fired. That's my yeah. biggest takeaway. They're my number four team. I had Nuggets number five, th- but I like it. Oh, over over under. Sorry, Nuggets. I apologize. Uh, forty. Oh my god, fifty and a half. No, under. <laughs> Damn, I thought it was going to start with a 40. <laughs> yeah. When I clicked on the page, I was like, what? 50 and a half. Heck? Oh, man. Jokic is too good. I will never bet his under. He's too good, but that's crazy. Ooh, that's crazy, man. If he wins 50, 50 games with this team, that's more impressive than LeBron turning Christian Wood into a playoff performer. No. If he actually takes this team to 50 wins, he's in my top 10. He's above a lot of one. It's not going to happen. All right, (laughs) number three in the West, for me, it's the Dallas Mavericks. Um, They won 50 games last season, Mm -hmm. but they only got P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford for the last third. Since they got those guys, they hit another gear. Went all the way to the NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. Did lose some uh, perimeter defenders in Derrick Jones Jr. and Josh Green to the Hornets. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they replaced them with Najee Marshall and Klay Thompson and Quentin Grimes. I think Klay Thompson was horrible for the Warriors. Overrated. This is a player who desperately needed a change of scenery. I think that he can stand around and hit catching wide open catch and shoot threes and not force a bunch of, like, heavily contested threes that he's been shooting the last couple of seasons. Can he guard? No. He's not going to guard anyone. He's absolutely terrible on the end of the floor. And that's okay, because he's not going to be a fucking, like, regular starter. They're going to realize early that, like, hey, we don't owe anything to Clay Thompson. He has no legacy that we have to protect here. Like you're gonna come off the bench and you're gonna be a fucking microwave scorer who can get off get hot and change the course of the game. Yeah. And we're gonna start Najee Marshall, who's actually a reliable player who can dribble, pass, shoot, and defend. Mm-hmm. I also like the Quentin Grimes pickup. Yeah, I it was beautiful. As a Knicks fan, I'm gonna tell you right now, that motherfucker's good, and I am upset that he's not with the Knicks anymore. That shit is crazy. But keep it moving. Yeah, much better fit than Tim Hardaway Jr. For this roster and for how they want to play. So I'm not very concerned about them losing Derrick Jones Jr. and Josh Green. I think Mm -hmm. Najee Marshall and Quentin Grimes are more than good enough to fill in for those guys. And honestly, are probably better than both of those two guys as well. Um, Omax Prosper, another 3 and D guy who uh, I think fits the profile of somebody who can help this type of team. And then, of course, their shot creation is off the charts. Luka Doncic is a walking bucket. Kyrie Irving is incandescent at his best and Mm -hmm. jaw-dropping at his worst. And if he can just avoid sitting out for half of the season for personal reasons or making a stand or – He played last year, man. Yeah, I know. But first time in nine years that we've seen him play 59 games. And still hasn't played 60. And and what happened nine years ago? 13 seasons. Uh-huh. He was what in the happened finals. nine years ago? Was that the he finals? Was in the finals. Hey, it looks, yep. looks like there's a trend. If he plays more than 60 something games, he's in the finals. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's really fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Kyrie, newsflash Kyrie Irving is good at basketball for all his <laughs> eccentric off the court nonsense. He's really yep. fucking good at playing basketball. Yeah. My question for them is 
is Luka Doncic in the best shape of his career? Because if he is, mm. I would pick them to win the West. But I don't think he is. And I think he, I don't think his body is need, is where it needs to be. I don't think he can sustain the defensive intensity over the course of the season that they're mm-hmm. going to need to get a number one spot. And I still don't think that he's realized that, like, there is a level of commitment that you have to reach the top echelon that talent alone cannot take you to. And it's kind of the same problem I've had with Joel Embiid, to be honest. I think mm-hmm. of them very similarly, very talented, offensive explosions, but – are you taking the professional side of the game serious enough? Why are we still seeing you drinking beers in the hallways after games? Why are we still <laughs> seeing pictures of you smoking cigarettes? Why have we never seen a picture of you with your shirt off in six years? Yeah. <laughs> it's because you're <laughs> fucking fat. You're not in good enough shape, buddy. I'm just going to say it. You're not in good enough shape to be that guy. And that's why I have a number three instead of number twenty, uh, number one. And it's just that simple. Um... I'm gonna have to disagree. I think he does if he does need to take that side more serious, the getting in shape shit, but he's in a different realm than Joel. He's made the Western Conference Finals already. He's made the finals. He's played as as we sit here right now, the second most points per game scored by any player ever in NBA history, dog. I think that conversation, they that's a separation. Now he does need to be in shape. For sure. Like, I get that completely. But I think he's proven to us now he's one of the better players in the league, and I don't think there's any going down. I got Dallas higher. I think this team has figured it out. One or two. Where do you have Two. I got him at two. Because I think the the Clay Thompson thing, they're going to – it probably is going to take them 20-ish games to figure that out. You know, so that'll kind of – you know, they won't be sitting at what the potential of what they could have been. But um, he's a beast, man. I, it's, it's between him and Jokic, best player in the NBA for me. And Giannis is a close there. But Giannis he needs some things to improve on. But, yeah, he's a beast, bro. Luka's a fucking beast. He's really fucking good. He is. I gotta, it's just I like he's not him. as good as he could be, and it fucking bugs me. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, but Jokic, mm-hmm. is Jokic in the best shape of his life? Yeah. Jokic will dust Luka in like a fucking – the endurance type of thing, like the beep test, Jokic oh, is blowing him. Luca out. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. Jokic just doesn't look like he's in shape, but in all actuality, if, and I know there's some Lakers fans that will agree with me with this. Jokic Beating Anthony, Anthony Davis, Davis up and down. Yeah, yeah, he's faster than him, and he's in better shape than him. I don't know about better shape, but he's faster. He's in better he's shape good. now. The shape isn't as athletically appe- uh, appealing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but in terms of functionality. He has more stamina than Anthony yeah. Davis, for sure. Yeah. Dallas will be good. They will be. Uh, all right, my number two team in the West. I hate this team. <laughs> you could have seen it. I, I'm surprised you got him this high. Oh, shit. Before, Dallas over under. Uh, da, 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 Dallas is 49 and a half. Over. Yeah, me too. But go ahead. The Phoenix Suns. Are my second best team in the Western Conference of the regular I'm shocked, season. Bro. Look at what I'm wearing right now, Terry. Okay. Look at the man who is responsible for the greatest season in our history. His name is Mike Bootenholzer. Yeah. He won 60 games with the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. He won 70% of his games with the Bucks. Yeah. He won a championship with the Bucks. He's renowned for fixing offenses. And he's really good at finding, like, what's the low-hanging fruit? What are the easy adjustments that we can make to just be better? Oh, yeah. we could shoot more threes and allow less threes. Mm-hmm. We could stop allowing shots at the rim and force teams to take more in rid range. We could stop leading the league in long-range twos and step one foot back and <laughs> shoot fucking threes. The Suns were 21st in the league, Terry, in three-point frequency, despite having – the league leader in three-point shooting, Grayson Allen, despite having Devin Booker, despite Mm -hmm. having Kevin Durant, despite having Bradley Beal, despite having a whole fucking roster of guys who could shoot threes, they would not shoot them. They shot the most two-point jump shots in the NBA. For every one of their uh, three stars, 
fewer than a third of their shots were threes. Yeah. For every single one of them. That's done. Yeah. With Mike Budenholzer in town, the first thing he did with the Hawks is he's like, hey, I'm putting a four-point line on the court. Fuck yeah. a three-point line. They're throwing. Right? They're gonna I'm throw bringing them. in Pero Antich to ruin Roy Hibbert's career. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Last last year they didn't even do well in the minutes that they had like Durant and Booker on the court or yeah. the three of them with Beal. They were only like plus six for hundred possessions, which is mm-hmm. not that great for what you'd expect. And the supporting cast is not good enough. This year, not only did they didn't have a point guard on the roster last year, this year they added two of them. They added Tyus Jones, they added Monte Morris, they added an actual backup center in Mason Plumley. Yeah. They re-signed Royce O'Neal. They re-signed Josh Akogi. They got rid of Yuta Watanabe and all the other guys who suck, who can't fucking play basketball. Jesus, that guy. They, they got rid of whoever their – oh, Jock Landale, their backup center, who yeah. fucking sucks, and got cut by the Atlanta Hawks in the same season. Now they have a clear offensive identity. Four out, one in. Either Plumlee's going to be out there setting screens for people and getting boards, or Nurkic mm-hmm. is going to be setting screens for people getting boards. They're not shooting 22-foot jump shots anymore. They're shooting threes. Mm-hmm. I think even if they're not as healthy as teams would – as, like, they would like to be, yeah, just having a really good coach that fits this roster and having a really improved bench and having a point guard and a backup five is mm-hmm. going to make a huge difference for them. I think they're going to get exposed in the playoffs because of that center position. However, in a regular season, I see them running up to games, running up to table, winning 50 plus, just like Mike Budenholzer has done every fucking season since his first with the Hawks. They're my number two team in the West. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't think he should have never been fired from Atlanta. No, he left on his own accord. He was like, not that. sucks. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> not that. The, from uh, Milwaukee. Bucks. Yeah. He yeah. should have never been fired from the Bucks. That didn't really make any sense. But, um, no, nah, I mean, I, I agree with you 100%. And I think, honestly, bro, like, they're not, like, futuristic with the whole we don't need a big man shit. But it's just more of, like, the two teams they can't beat got significantly worse. So if they can kind of avoid Minnesota and Denver, yeah, they might be a championship team, you know? Because, like, Dallas's big guys are not post-up guys or neither is Rudy, but, like, it's a, it's a rebound thing. You know, Mason Plumley versus uh, Gafford and Lively. Lively. It'll still be kind of tough. But, you know, maybe just if they can avoid those three teams, you know, I'm still not sure if the Lakers can do anything. We'll never see if they'll be a contender or not. We never fucking know. Probably not. But I think they'll be okay, man. I think if they, you know, they got Allen, Booker, Durant, Beal. They all can shoot threes. If they shoot more of them, they're going to win a shitload of games. I agree with you wholeheartedly. They're a great team. You got them at three. I got them at two. Or you got them at two? I had them at two. I had them at two. You got them at two. I got him at one, but uh, Ooh. they're shooting threes. Who knows her? Everybody's forgetting. That motherfucker's a great fucking coach, man. He's a yeah. fantastic coach. They got this. We're going for they're it. They're going to be good in a regular season, man. Yeah. My number one team, though, is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay, see. They finished uh, number one last year. Yep. They great added season. Alex Caruso and Alan Hart- uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. Alan Hartenstein. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, how's that's, Hartenstein that's bouncing jeweler. all over? How's Hartenstein bouncing all over the league? This is crazy. I don't know why people are just slow to realize he's good because they didn't know he was part black. I think that's we what the him. was. They're like, yeah, oh, he's just a white year. Jewish guy. It's like, no, he's half black. His dad is black. <laughs> If he had just told people that he was half black earlier, he never would have had a chance to play on the Knicks. <laughs> Gold all of my chain. Right. Gold all of my <laughs> Trinidad James. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, the Knicks needed him for sure last year. It's just, it's maybe it's a money thing. I don't know. Okay, see. He was he was good with the Clippers. He was good with the Rockets. It's just like yeah, nobody I mean, nobody yeah. paid attention. He might but, stay. He might he might be for this team for a while. But go ahead. Their biggest problem last year was rebounding. 
and mm -hmm. Hartenstein helps that tremendously. Yeah. Um, they doubled down on one of their strengths in perimeter defense. Having Caruso and Lou Dort out there at the same time, along mm -hmm. SGA and Jalen Williams, it's like, who the fuck are you going to try to bring up in the pick and roll and attack? Yeah. Like, I, 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 there's no weak links. It's like the Boston Celtics. It's like, okay, we'll just fucking switch it. What are you going to do? So I love their starting five. I love them yeah. getting rid of Josh Giddy, who I said was the fly in the ointment before the season started last year. And I think that has proved to be true. They no Hopefully, longer have to yeah. shoehorn minutes in for him to go do Australian fucking dribble, 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 pass when I finally get to the rim bullshit. Yeah, and they don't have to show IDs for everybody that walks into the arena, <laughs> you know, so – Huge fucking weight off their back. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine though, like playing with like a child molester all season, trying to act like shit is cool, and then when he gets traded, just like, Ooh. yeah. See, that's that's the thing, bro. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I think in sports, there's two things that are. It's always gonna be touchy. Unfortunately, gay guys in the locker room. And dudes that fuck around hey, with you kids. seen the Aaron Hernandez uh, doc, by the way? The Aaron Hernandez no, show on FX? Uh, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I it's, heard it was It's crazy. so hilarious. Yeah, I it's, heard it was crazy. It might be the funniest show I've ever seen. The whole okay. first five episodes are just like, he's angry because he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> he I did want hear people to know how gay he is. Hey, I'm not gay. <laughs> You're gay, motherfucker. <laughs> I did. I did I'll hear I'll shoot like... you if you call me gay. <laughs> I heard some reviews about people just like his family's like, all right, like we get it. Can like come on, dude? Him and his teammate were like both in the same room fucking two different girls, and yeah. he couldn't like his dick was getting soft, so he yeah. started looking at his teammates' ass while he's oh. fucking his girl. Yeah. I was like, yo, yo, they're in that Come on, the Aaron Hernandez one is a crazy one, but yeah, <laughs> just 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 further proof to your point. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, yeah, we, they don't fuck with dudes that fuck with kids and, you know, uh, aren't that gay shit. That's just sports. It is what it is. It'll probably change, you know. It's going to take time, though. It's a very hyper-masculine environment. You know, yeah, it's got to start with the less combative ones like soccer and golf and shit like that, and then eventually yeah, it'll yeah. make its way into, like, football, basketball, hockey. That type I mean, of like, unfortunately, the dudes have to be, like, fucking LeBron. Like if the yeah. if you like if the dude's <laughs> just fucking amazing, you're just like ah, who cares? I don't give a fuck who he fucks. This dude's the best player on the team. This dude's the best player in the league. I don't give a damn. But yeah, anyways, keep going. See you later, Giddy. <laughs> Thank you, Darrell Revis. Um, <laughs> I like uh, I like their bench for the uh, for the Thunder. I like Isaiah Joe. I like Hartenstein. I like uh, Kassan Wallace. I like mm -hmm. Aaron Wiggins. I like Kenrick Williams. I even like Jay Will as a back of five. You can shoot threes and play above the rim. Mm -hmm. um, there are not really any holes on this team. They have a really good identity. Everyone on this team can dribble, pass, and shoot. Everyone can play defense for the most point. Yep. Um, good starting five, good bench, great coach. They're going to win the West. They're good. It's just like Celtics. Yeah. You, know, just you had a number you two, though. Suns, bro. I'm going with the Suns. No, I'm just saying I'm going with the Suns, bro. But what about the Thunder gave you like cause that you're like, hmm, there may be something that people are not paying attention to that's going to cause them to slip up and not get the number one spot. Uh, what if SJ is hurt? That's the only thing. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, because like he's amazingly, you know, is always healthy, but you know, man. No, just throw it I, out there. I bet that it would be the Kassan Wallace show then, and they'd still win like fucking 48 <laughs> games. <laughs> you like Kassan Wallace, huh? No, nah, they do have a really good team. I, I really do wonder what they're going to do in the playoffs, though, because it's just such a different environment. Like, I wonder if they're going to lose again to, like, you know, the Dallas or the Suns or, like, Denver or some shit or whatever, just because experience. But they do have a good team on paper. They have an excellent team on paper, you know. Let's see if they can take the leap. Because last year they lost, what, second round, or was it – First, yeah, second no, round. Second round. The, it was second round. Yeah. To the Timberwolves. Yeah. Timberwolves kind of. No, Dallas, right? Was it Dallas? Thought, yeah, it was uh, Dallas. It was yeah, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. Yeah, Luca just took their lunch. So I don't I don't know, man. We'll see. I like I like SGA, but he did 
and we're just doing regular season standings, but it wasn't exactly the same. There were some deficiencies and the rebounding thing for sure. Lively and fucking Gafford literally just grabbed every single board. So, yeah, Hartenstein. Can, can we talk simple... about the SGA shit though? Can we talk about it? What? Oh, MVP or what? I don't know if there's been a player since John Morant that we've rushed to coronate as fast as SGA as like one of the league's top guys. You don't think he was awesome last year? That he was awesome. He was awesome in the regular season. You played the Pelicans who sucked ass in the first round. <laughs> and that's as far as uh, everything went. And like you mentioned, he wasn't the same level of efficiency and no. dominance in the postseason as he was in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Like, the dude has won one playoff series in his whole career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we talk about him in the same breath as Luca. We talk about him in the same breath as Tatum. We talk about him in the same breath as guys – who have achieved much more? We put they put him above Giannis on the fucking preseason survey or whatever. Why have we ju- like rushed to coronate SGA? Why hasn't he had to prove it like everyone else? Man, I don't know, bro. Do you think it's just a regular season thing though? As far as I don't know about the ESPN poll, I don't know if they're doing like a whole fucking season or just a regular season. Like in the regular season. I don't – I put him in the same vein as those dudes in the regular season because he was second in MVP last year, right? He scored like 31 yeah. a game. Second like five, in MVP. Five assists, one and a half steals, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of rebounds. It, it takes levels. I'm never going to put him up that high as far as like actually. Like he's still to me probably more of like six or seven. But I take Jalen Brunson over him in a heartbeat. Um, it's a height thing for me, but regular season, he's the same as everyone except for Jokic, Giannis. Regular Luka, season, man, and Luka Doncic. Well, we how we measure the top ten players in the league though is never by the regular season. It's always it's a, by it's, the playoff performance. Yeah. So I just yeah, I don't you. understand. Like we talk about him so different. Like, we judge him so different than everyone else in the league. And even the same shit I said about Anthony Edwards earlier. Like, I'm judging you on what that you've done so far in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And in the Western Conference Finals, your first time ever making that deep, you came up small. Yeah, And with SGA, he's come up small. You know what? I think it's more – I think it also is because, like, their ascension was so quick. They went from, like, 30 wins and last year they won, like, fucking – 58 or whatever you know what i'm saying so it was just like oh shit this dude's really good you know like we saw him progress but it wasn't like everyone else is either like a a complete superstar or they gradually got better like Giannis gradually got better joel Embiid, Jokic, every star that you could think of any name you can think of it went from like 18 24 27 30 yeah this dude went from like seven points with the clippers 12 points 25, 32. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck? And his team won 50 something games. So maybe that's a part of it, but I don't know. You Are know, you I, with me that we should pump the brakes a little bit? Oh, I agree like 100%. T- top five it's, player. Stuff no, I, that, that, I, yeah, I agree 100%, especially because he didn't look great in the playoffs. Like, I can t- definitely just take a step back and be like, oh, I don't know. But then again, regular this regular season, he could win the MVP. He could, and I have him number one. And I'm not trying to hate on SGA. I like his game a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, the way that we talk about guys, I'd like it to be a bit more consistent. Now, I will say, with the – and we're done with the list, and we can go over it. But with the – not toxicity, but with the analytical, analytically-led NBA – do you think he's ever going to get an MVP? Because I think last year, I don't think the narratives are pushing as much as I thought they usually did. You know, uh, like the Derrick Rose one and a couple of the other ones, like back in the mid-2010-ish era and that type of shit. If Jokic and Giannis have those same seasons that they always do, like the high shooting percentages, the great rebounds, assists, does SGA stand a chance? You know, no. how many w- games do they got to win? 
he does not stand a chance and he never will stand a chance. And there's one big reason for that. By the time Jokic and all these other top guys are gone, it's going to be a guy named Victor Wembanyama who's winning all the <laughs> fucking MVPs. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you probably. got no chance against that guy. Yeah. When he's 24, good luck. See you later. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a fucking beast. All right, man, so go over your West. We finished all right. it. From bottom to top, we started off with the Portland Trailblazers at the very bottom. Then we moved on to the Utah Jazz. Above them, we had the Clippers at 13, the Spurs at 12, the Grizzlies at 11, the Pelicans at 10, the Kings at 9, the Lakers at 8, the Warriors at 7, the Rockets at 6, the Timberwolves at 5, the Nuggets at 4, the Mavs at 3. Mm-hmm. The Suns at two, and the Thunder at one. It's a beautiful list. You know, everything isn't going to be copacetic. We're not going to agree on everything, but it's not that bad. Not that bad. Uh, the last two over unders we didn't hit. Suns and the the Suns and OKC. Suns was Phoenix was forty eight and a half. That's an over under. Yeah, forty eight and a half. Oh. Take the over and lock it. Lock that the fuck yeah. in. And then the OKC Thunder is 57 and a half. Over. All right. I got over for the Suns and I got over for OKC. I thought about it for a second, but I'm going to give them the over. They get to play the East some too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many games did they win last year? 61. I kept saying 50 something. Was it 60? 61? 61. Yeah, 61 Ooh. and 21. Yeah, it might be close. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. We finished oh, with the East. Excuse me. Sorry. I was looking at the projection. They won 57. Oh, 57. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And ooh. Over 57? Probably. We'll see. We'll see. That'll be tough. I bet over 60. I think they're going to be legit. I think they're going to be like the Celtics in the West. And like you mentioned, the West doesn't have the top, top, top echelon teams like they used to. They got a bunch of guys who are competent and they're decent, but Mm -hmm. not a lot of people who I think are going to scare the Thunder on a night-to-night basis. So I think they'll be all right. I don't think so. I'm going to probably look at a prop bet, see if what the 60 over wins for the Thunder would be. Maybe parlay it with something else. Because I, I I can't see them not winning 60, especially with the Cooper flag thing going on. Right. They, they're probably going to win 61, I would say. There we are, guys. That's our 2024-2025 NBA season preview. We went through every single team in the league. You cannot watch this podcast and be like, they didn't talk about my team. The <laughs> Brooklyn Nets never get national coverage. Yeah, we did. Okay, we <laughs> talked about Nick Claxton. We talked about Cam Thomas. We yep. talked about all the guys you're going to trade. And then, of course, we talked about the big teams as well. Yep. When we come back, Terry, we'll have Champions League results. Yep. We'll have the two weeks to talk about the NFL season. Mm-hmm. And we'll have the first week impressions from the NBA. I cannot wait, sir. I cannot wait. That's time of the year. North Carolina. Continue to stand up. Peace.